And this is, I think, where Peter was going, right? No. When I get to one, I know that I have, I have four directions I can go. When I get to this one, I know that I can go this way or this way. When I get to this one, I only have one direction I can go. So I'm, de I'm defining the open, if these were walls, these are the openings in the wall. I have a thought. Um, if I was looking at it, I would think of it like a tree, and I'm actually trying to find the next number. So from one, I'm going to find all my locations for two, then um, go up to find three, go to four, and then just try to follow the path with the, you know, two. Right. But you do, you do need to keep track of which sides of the box are open. Then he sees on the right track, this is what I meant. Uh, if, if you imagine the, what we just got with, uh, with the numbering, the distance of the node, the degrees of the node from the root as a chart, you know that your, uh, your final place is on one branch. That's right. You pick that point and you see it has degree of five. So you know your whole route needs to pass five steps. Five. Now, out of the final place, which, made, which has a degree five, you see only one node that has degree four. That's right. From that point, you see only one that, and, and you. And now, now, you now my memory is coming back to me. You're absolutely right. So you, you solve the maze backwards once you've done this. Right. So we know that this is our goal. We get to four. Then we find the nearest three, which is here. And then we find the nearest two, and we can randomly pick. Or if we were clever, we would say, oh, well, we can reduce the number of turns by picking this two, it's the straight line, instead of the turn. And then the straight line one. So by picking these two paths are the same length, but this one is more likely to be fast. Thank you for reminding me of that. It's been, like I said, it's been a long time since I've studied this algorithm. Well, most welcome. Thank, thank you for reminding me that those are cyclic trees. So yeah. I think it's not that simple. So I yeah. was saying. So when you when you originally said Peter tried to remove the dry branches, you meant backwards in the tunnel. Yes, you would always right. do that yes. backwards. Yes. Okay, that yeah, makes that's the key. It's, it's, it's all yeah, that's the part when you when you said dry branches. I was trying to figure it out. It didn't make sense going forward, but going backwards, it right. makes perfect sense. It's just intuitively a natural thing. To, okay, right. Right, that makes sense. So what okay. in this, the first thing you need to do is map the whole field. That is correct. So you have to go through the whole field, and as you're mapping the whole field, in order to assign all these numbers, this is why you have to assign what all these directions are, and remember those. At the end, to reduce the maze, you don't care. What, you, know, you don't care that this has which directions are available here, all you care about is I'm going from one to two, from this node to this node. But in order to assign the numbers, you have to go through and say, oh, well, I've got four openings here and one opening here, and you know I've got two openings here, two openings here, three openings here. And that you have to know that to be able to assign the numbers. Yeah, but if you're doing is this a situation where you do left hand first run, right hand the other run? How do you match up the numbers? Because you don't know, because you may be coming from a different direction that you've been to that node already, unless you're really using good yeah, you counting the distance. You have to keep, you don't. Because you might loop back to somewhere you've been already and not know you've already recorded at that node. You do, you do need to track when distance. You're, you're absolutely you right, Glenn. When you're array up there, when you're marking on your 2D array, you do the one run. Okay. Now you use the same array. Do your, your other run with the other rule, and if you end up with numbers that are smaller, you mark the smaller ones. You use the smaller numbers. You basically overlaid your two on top of it, then you do your reduction. But how do you know you're actually back? You may have looped back through a different distance That's getting there. So how do but, you know but you what know how many, one? But you know how many cells you're marking along the way. Right. Yeah, right. You, have, you have to assign... You know, if this is, you know, cell zero, zero, 
and you know we're doing you know pluses here and minuses here and minuses here and pluses okay. here, or however you want to assign your array values, array indices. So you are trying to make distance a factor. You are definitely yeah, keeping track of distance yeah. because you have to know. Um, you know, in this maze it doesn't matter, but you know if there were a gap here, let's just modify this maze real quickly. From the five to six, that has to be a two cell distance because it could. Yeah. That, right. You have to know that because if you were to be own. Thank you. This maze actually doesn't account for that. We'll just keep that. Keep it like that. So from this node here, this five, to this six, to this seven, this is a distance of two. So you need to know that this has two openings and call that a node by keeping track of the distance right. that your robot moves. Thank you for So your six that. would be a seven and your seven would be an eight. Yes, you're correct. Okay. Thank you, Don. Obviously, it makes no difference in the reduction, but it would because if if there were a, if you had this path, you know, inserted in here, like this, let's just redraw this maze real quick, and we can find an error that Don's suggestion would fix. If we put the goal here and did this, this is why you need to keep track of your openings. Because if I have three, four, five, six, six, oh, five, seven, five, five, five yeah, six. seven, five, six. And this is also why you solve it in reverse. Because if I were to solve it one, two, three, four, five, I might think, oh, well, I can go here. And I can't. Well, Which is why assuming. we solve it in reverse. You're assuming that the maze has turns and straights at e even units. That it, this and it that dies. is part of the requirement of okay. the flooding algorithm. It's on a ten inch. This center. algorithm requires okay. an even grid. Okay. I don't think we have an even grid. Do we? we do. We have an even grid. Ten inch centers. It's, yeah. it's ten inch centered. Ah, yeah. Which I've learned the hard way. Because <laughs> my robot's built on a twelve inch center. <laughs> 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 All right. So here's an idea. Of this really great and um, well, if we take a 10 minute um, break but before we do that